If you've ever had a traditional bow that you've wanted to refinish, this video is for you. Let's get to the point. One of the cool things about traditional bows is they can last a really long time. I've got one that's like 40 or 50 years old, but over that period of time, the finish may wear out or it could chip or depending on the type of finish, if it was left outside. Today, we're talking about how to refinish a bow. This bow right here is pretty nostalgic for me because it's the first version of the Bones, which is the bow at Shatterproof Archery we sell. This is one of the first, I think, 10 or 15 bows that I ever sold in my life. And the customer for this bow recently reached out and asked if we could reduce the poundage. Now with this specific bow, it's something I actually can do. So we're gonna reduce the poundage and then also add a brand new finish to this bow. The finish we used, I think it was around two years ago when I originally sold this, has now changed and we've upgraded to a better finish. I'm gonna start by putting a bowstring on the bow and just taking a look at it, make sure everything's looking good to my eye. Oh yeah, it's looking great. One of the design changes we've made is we've made the limbs a little bit thinner than we used to. And that's fantastic news for this customer because I can thin the limbs and make it a lower poundage rather than thinning the thickness. The reason that's cool is because by thinning the limbs, it should keep the speed up, but give it a lighter poundage draw. With this shape, it's really gradual, so it's a really stable shape. If it's a steep recurve, you don't wanna thin the limbs too much, but this one definitely has room to be thinned. I'm gonna test the poundage to see the exact amount I need to remove. Yeah, everything's looking really good. Okay, 47, okay, yeah, that's great. I was curious because after two years, I was gonna see if any uh, set had happened, but we're, Pretty solid. I'm pretty sure it says 47. Yeah, I hit 47 and it says 47 on the bow. So that's really cool that the poundage has stayed consistent over the last two years. And if you're unfamiliar with what I mean by that, here's a quick example with a wood bow so you can see what I'm talking about. When I say set, another word you could use is string follow. What that means is that the limb starts to remember the shape of having a string on it. So this limb used to be flat, but now it's kind of pointed towards the archer a little bit. That happens because the bow is under load, it's under stress. That's why you wanna unstring the bow every time you shoot it. And sometimes with different types of material, you'll lose one, two, or three pounds of draw weight over a period of time if a string was left on it a long time, or if your material had too much moisture in it on a wood bow and things like that. Okay, Kaz's note, this is for James and we're dropping it to a 40 pound bow. So I need to drop seven pounds. Let me measure the width real quick. Sweet, so we can bring the width down about a quarter inch and then bring it gradual. And then if we need to, we'll reduce some thickness as well. We used 40 thou glass on this bow and we should be able to reduce that down to 30 thou if we need to. I don't think we're gonna even get close to that. Uh, we should be able to drop the seven pounds pretty easily. Now, if you do alter a bow you bought from a manufacturer, the warranty, everything is probably gone. So uh, do it at your own risk. Um, I made this bow, I'm a bow maker, and I'm very comfortable altering bows. But if you're not trying to alter the bow, I'll show you just how to remove the finish and then put a new finish on here in a second. This is uh, my finishing station over here. And what I'm gonna do is use a template we have here to make sure I mark this consistently. This template will allow me to remove the material perfectly. And you'll see on the edge here, I have a fair amount I can still remove. There's no limb twist problems at all. Everything's looking straight. So I can just mark this out off of the numerical center. And I don't have to worry about the torsional center because I already put the string on it and we're looking good. Now by reducing the width, I might have to rework uh, the tip overlay slightly. But that's no issue at all.
Okay, next I'm gonna use a orbital sander and clean up these edges real good. And then you do wanna round the fiberglass slightly if you ever do this, that's uh, called trapping the edges. Uh, so I'll probably start with a 120 and work my way up until it's really smooth. With the width reduced, let's check the poundage again before we keep sanding. And hopefully here, we have dropped a few pounds. I will exercise it a little bit first. Yeah, we're at 42. That is perfect. The reason that's perfect is because when I remove the finish with the sanding, you'll get a little bit of fiberglass there and it'll be really easy to basically hit the 40 pound dead on. So I'm gonna remove the finish now. It'll probably drop another pound or so, maybe two pounds and we'll be good to go. I learned a few things about removing finishes that maybe will be helpful to you. One of the things I noticed is that a real plasticky finish generally has a really thick wall. This would be like a polyurethane type of a finish and it makes it um, difficult to sand off, but it actually is, has the ability to be scraped off and then sanded to finish it. So ideally we'll remove the finish without the fiberglass. The nice thing about this is it keeps you from removing fiberglass. And so if you take the time to do this and then finish with sandpaper, it'll keep the bow's poundage more consistent. And, hi Fletch. Oh, thank you. Here, let's hang out. But each finish can be a little bit different. So you'll see there's a couple scratches there from the scraper and I'll have to sand that down. Um, you can also just sand from the start. You just might go through more sandpaper. If you're trying to not remove any draw weight, I would try to use a scraper if you can to remove as much of the finish as possible. Since I have 2.7 pounds to remove, I'm gonna go ahead and sand this with 100 grit sandpaper, and then I'll bring that up to like 220 before I put the finish on it. And I know that should give me plenty of room to not go below my 40 pound mark, and it'll be a little more speedy. No matter how good your dust collection is, it's gonna leave some fiberglass behind. My favorite cleanup method is to use some acetone. I do this between the different grits of sandpaper and it helps for a better finish. Um, you can see all that gunk coming off because what you'll end up doing is just sanding the fiberglass dust that's on top of the fiberglass instead of the actual fiberglass itself. The other major thing you need to pay attention to is to not press hard with the sander. You wanna let the sander do the work and that'll keep it from getting uh, deep scratches in the fiberglass. If you needed to drop your bow's poundage and you know for a fact you have extra fiberglass, then you can look to remove material evenly in order to reduce the poundage. In this case, our final sanding will reduce it that last two pounds. So we're trying not to remove material. We're trying to leave it as much material on it as we can. You can always take off more material. It's a little more difficult to put it back on. I split the bow into a couple sections. First, I'll take care of all the fiberglass and then I'll move on to the handle, the wood, uh, the bamboo inlay and the tip overlays. I'll do that next, but this allows me to know that the fiberglass is ready for the finish and then I'll move on to the next sections of the bow. So let's do that now. Alrighty, and the last thing I found to be super useful after it's looking pretty good, all cleaned up, is to grab sandpaper with the hand. And depending on the fiberglass, sometimes the scratches are harder to get out. 
And if you sand with the grain of the fiberglass, so along the limb, uh, it'll hide the scratches better and or help them get out more. And so there's one tiny spot right here and I will just only sand in this direction. Everyone has their own opinions when it comes to finishes, at least people who have practiced and done a bunch of different things. I noticed that fiberglass does better with a higher grit and you don't have to go as high on the wood. So what I'm hand sanding with here is 320 and I find that I get a really, really good finish on fiberglass if I go up to higher grits. The, the counter argument is that your finish isn't gonna stick as well to your material because you're basically burnishing instead of sanding. On the flip side of that, I've done test. Here's one of the limbs I did test on and you can see the spots where I had tape. And so I sanded it to 180, 220, and 320, and then finished out all the areas. And when you look up close, you can see the scratch marks on everything but the 320. And I've never had finish adhere adhesion problems on fiberglass when you go to 320. So what I'm saying is you go to 320 potentially on the fiberglass for best results, but on the wood, stop at 180 or 220, and that'll finish better on wood. I did that exact same test here on the wood. You can see the different layers and no difference visually from the 320 all the way down to the 180. It is now time to test the poundage again. No way, that's perfect. We're good to go. One final inspection of the full bow and uh, just hand sanding anything that looks like I want it to uh, maybe get a scratch out, want it to look better. And also cleaning it as you go and getting different lighting or if you bump it like that it could scratch it. So you want to uh, go over it one more time. But getting different angles with the lighting will allow you to see things that you may not be able to see from a different angle. Now that the bow is sanded, ready for a finish, let's talk about what to use. If you don't have a spray gun, you can totally get a can like this, $10 polyurethane, and use it to finish the bow and get a great finish that'll last three to five years. Pretty stinking good. The part that'll wear out is gonna be right around the handle. That's where it'll start to gum up because of all the sweat and hand oils on the finish over a long period of time. You can also think of high impact finishes as doing really well. So cabinet finishes, hardwood floor finishes, those sort of finishes do well. A common misconception, at least in my opinion misconception, is that the finish will crack with the bow bending. I've tried over 10 different finishes from all different types, water-based, oil-based, rub-on, uh, paint-on, wipe-on, spray-on, penetrating oils, and then finishes that stay on top of the material. All of that, and never has one finish ever cracked on me. It's never been brittle enough that when the bow bends, it cracks. So my first recommendation is if you're familiar with a finish, use the one you're familiar with because you'll get better results with a finish that you're good at using than you will with a finish that maybe is brand new to you or a different, uh, maybe not a finish that's brand new, but if you're do, gonna do a new technique, you might need a little practice to get a great result. If you have a nice spray gun that sprays clear coat finishes on, we have started using the Crystal Products by Campbell. And what we use is something very similar to a cabinet finish. And this type of finish, you use a finish and a hardener. And this helps it be really, really good underneath high impact. A lot of wear and tear. And this is specifically used on a lot of cabinets, right? Near, you know, the door handles or, or the knobs on a cabinet will often, the finish right underneath that will wear out. A lot of different finishes will protect the material plenty, plenty good. It's just gonna be a matter of how you like it to look. Follow general finishing principles. The main ones are cleaning your material extremely good, and then whatever finish you're doing, it actually makes a big difference to follow the manufacturer's recommendations. So if they say sand between coats, sand between coats. 
I know that's simple, but I like to finish a bow really quickly and I've cut corners in the past on my personal bows. It's not worth it. I'm not gonna film inside the spray booth because I don't wanna get finish on the camera, but here the bow is right now. And uh, the only other thing I need to do here is write the poundage here. And I'm gonna put our uh, coin in right here. And this bow is definitely getting an upgrade today. It's gonna be pretty sweet. I see another scratch to sand out. It's the following day now and the bow is now finished. I've always found it harder to finish the fiberglass really well than finishing the wood, but it turned out great on this bow and I'm definitely getting it dialed in. I did add our coin here and the AMO and the poundage down at the bottom, so a little different markings than what was originally on this bow. And we had talked to James and he was totally good with that. I probably sound tired and that's because it's early in the morning. With that, this bow's finished. James, this is coming to you right now. I hope you really, really enjoy it. Thank you everybody for watching. We hit 10,000 subscribers recently. That is a really cool milestone for Shatterproof Archery. It is an honor to be able to make these videos and make these products. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our shop and we'd love to help you with any of your archery needs because our goal is to help more people enjoy more archery. And with that, stay shatterproof and I'll see you on the next video.